Have you ever given up everything to change that one goal? Was that the only thing you could think about at that moment? Did you even set aside your family and your best friends? Imagine your greatest challenge. Imagine your ultimate dream. The last one and a half year, I lived that dream. Together with 19 students, I focused on only one goal. Winning the World Solar Challenge at the other side of the world, in Australia. To be able to reach my goal, I did not study for one and a half year. And in 68 weeks, we got from complete strangers to one team, standing at the start of the World Solar Challenge, together with 43 teams from 23 different countries. We drove 3,021 kilometers through the outback of Australia with an average speed of 90.3 kilometers an hour using only solar power. After 33 hours and 27 minutes, we finished. Second, with a difference of only three and a half minutes. We lost. But did I lose? I give you an insight in this tremendous challenge. To design, build, test, and transport a fully working solar car. It takes a lot of planning, especially in such short time. I fulfilled the function secretary, finance and logistics within the management team. It was a tough journey. And thousands and thousands of tasks had to be fulfilled. And as a fact, there were many more tasks to do than I had time in a day. So I had to find a way to work as efficient as possible, so I was able to do as much task as possible. I also had to turn down tasks or hand them over to others. And when I had to work on something for a few hours, I would shut down all distractions and kill all notifications to increase my efficiency. I became quite good at it, and I was able to make the most out of my days. I came back from Australia, and I met with a good friend of mine. I had not seen him for a long time. I'm going to his place to have dinner. We're doing the groceries, preparing the meal, do the dishes and even watch a movie. I'm having a great evening, but something feels quite strange for me. It's the next day and I give it a thought. And I realize where that feeling comes from. The past year I've been focusing on performing more and more efficiently. But, yeah, is that everything? Is focusing on performance everything? Suddenly I realized the importance of spending time together with the people who are important in your life. How often do I say I'm too busy? Now I'm aware where I spend my time on. Are you aware where you spend your time on? Who are the important people in your life? How often do you say them? I'm too busy. Back to the project. After months of preparation, everything is ready to depart to Australia. Until two weeks prior to the departure date, I receive an email. The packaging for our dangerous goods is not sufficient, and the transport company is not able to transport our most important part, the battery of our solar car. This is all due to new regulations. The regulations for lithium-ion batteries are very strict and it will be a tough job finding a new company who is able to deliver the needed packaging. I'm calling many packaging companies, but no one is able to deliver what I need. After five days of calling and emailing, I find one company who might be able to deliver what I need. However, their contact person is currently not available. They tell me I will be able to reach him eight days prior to the departure date. That day, I call him immediately. He picks up the phone and asks me if I can call him back at the end of the day. I tell him politely, No! I need your help! I need your product for our packaging, and I need it now! I know I'm short on time, and I have to convince him. He ends the conversation, but before he does, he says, I'll see what I can do. Then the waiting started. 
After two hours, I finally received an email from his colleague, starting with, Dear Martin, Constantine, our CEO, I stop reading and I take a deep breath, realizing what I've been doing. I called someone who I'd never seen or spoken before from a company I didn't even know before to demand the CEO that he had to arrange our product as quickly as possible whilst he was in the middle of a meeting. At that moment, I realized what passion really meant for me. It was breaking all barriers to reach my goal. The whole project is really intense so far, and especially these last two weeks are extracting a lot of energy for me. We arrive as a team six weeks prior to the start of the challenge in Australia. Responsibilities, new responsibilities arise, and several are shifted. The original 19 team members increased to 37. Now all support has arrived. The first two weeks, I'm able to manage it. But after that, I'm running around like a headless chicken. I am failing. Two weeks prior to the start of the challenge, two former team members arrive. They arrive for support. The day they arrive, I give them a full update about the situation. I beg them to take over my responsibilities. It is the hardest thing I've ever done, because I do not want to fail. At that moment, it was the best thing I could have ever done. I'd overcome a great, gigantic, personal barrier. I learned that asking for help is not a sign of weakness, it's a strength. And I encourage you to, even when you're not failing, ask for help. I promise you, the results will be better. And that's exactly what I did, not only during the solar challenge, but also with my talk. I asked my parents, as my best friends, my coach, to help me with this talk, to further improve it. And without them, I would not be standing here the same. For me, I did not lose. I won. Solar Tintenta is the greatest learning school in life for me. And the lessons I learned will help me the rest of my life. And with these lessons learned, I will be able to help others. I encourage you to chase your dream, to keep on learning and teach others what you know. Make a difference for people. Make a difference in the world. <laughs>